Well, um, the one, can, oh, Bailey, could, could you welcome us anyway, even though you're at home? I've already made the assignment, so you don't need to do all that, but it's still your opportunity to conduct. Are you with us? Is my volume off? No. No, I think it's all the way up. Oh, um, it won't let me talk. Yeah, it's the worst. Okay, I got you. I got you today. Hopefully, you're feeling better tomorrow. So we've got. Um, okay, so on Zoom today we've got Iola is with us, and Heath is with us, and Bailey's with us. Not feeling well or couldn't get here today to class. So I'm so glad you're here. You're in the right place at the right time, and I'm, I'm proud of you for that. Thank you for showing up today. Um, as usual, have your learning tools out, scriptures, study journal. Um, I am going to invite you to participate today, and I'm excited about what we can do together in here. Uh, so, let's see. Jacob, we'll do what must be done. We've got a music share and a personal share from Caleb today. Bryson will open this meeting with prayer. Ben will do a doctrinal mastery. I will attempt to preach. Class cynic will be Sylvia. And then uh, giving thanks will be Adam Knight. Uh, announcements. Full moon party this Saturday night, 7.30, 10.30. What's that? The full moon already. Hey, the full moon, I think, will be Monday. Sunday or Monday, so it's, I know it's like, that went fast. Yeah. So, um, come and join us. If you've never been, come, yeah, come on up. And uh, what else is going on this week? Any events that we haven't written down? Tomorrow will be Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the big deal about tomorrow being Tuesday? Wednesday. You lost the day somewhere. <laughs> Get up to speed here. <laughs> Masks come in handy sometimes. You can cover your blushing, right? <laughs> He's like, uh. I need to do that. <laughs> what is special about tomorrow, anyway, if it, even if it is Wednesday? Nothing. Nothing? Wednesday. Gotcha. Early release. <laughs> Early release tomorrow. Is that a good thing? No. <laughs> Some of you like it. Some of you don't. Yeah. Well, it's, it's uh, tough for me because we have less time. Um, what else is going on? Anything else? Yes? We have a soccer game in Ben today. Today? You leave early? Yeah, 10 o'clock. Well, 10.30 when we go through. Okay. Have you played, uh, are you playing Ben? Yeah. Have you played him before? Uh, no. What? Have we played Ben before? No. No. Okay. Good luck. Good luck. So no right. home events for us to... Yeah. Come and enjoy. There's a, there's actually there's a volleyball game in there. Here? Yeah. Volleyball game at like six forty five. Um, wear red, white, and blue. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. We're, it's bumming, it's like the bumming theme. Like last time I was wearing in black for our test and now it's red, white, and blue. The time is again what? It's six forty five and the game starts at seven. Okay. So it's super fun guys. Just just show up, it's awesome. We're near school ID and you'll get it for free. Do we have any members of the stake playing that you know of? Not that I know of. Uh, um, Jacob, I noticed that this one's getting pretty low. Um, so let's go ahead and put some more. In fact, this would probably could use a change of water. So you right. can just take this and kind of dump out the water in the drinking fountain and then fill it up again. Right. And then this one's also getting kind of low. So you may as well top that one off too. We don't want it to run out of water here. Ooh, that's interesting. The water evaporates. It gets used up, but it also just disappears. Okay, well, enough of the opening here. Let's turn it over to Caleb for an opening uh, music. Um, I don't have any, like,
it's a really, really good song. It's basically, um, there's a whole movie about it. Um, I don't think Wang was great, but uh, it's just a really calming song. Um, it's not exactly a hymn, but it's a really good song. Um, and it's basically about, um, you know, when you, you know, when you're going to be on the spot of Jesus Christ. Um, and he's just kind of like wondering, like, you know, if he can only imagine. I can only. That's not it. That's like a. <laughs> Do you want me to play it? You can if you want. Um, but yeah, it's just a really good song. Um, and there's a really good movie about it. So yeah, it's a spiritual song. It's a good song. Well, let's listen to it. If you love it, if it's uplifting to you, then it could be good. Is it all right? Is, is this the one? Really good song. Uh, there's a movie about his 
life um, and why he created it. Um, and I really, really recommend the movie. It's just what I can only imagine. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Caleb. Powerful song. holds the, the keys of the ministering of angels and of the gospel of repentance and of baptism by immersion for the remission of sins. And this shall never be taken again from the earth until the son of Levi do offer again an offering unto the Lord in righteousness. And I thought it was cool how it like said it should like never be taken from the earth again. That part, that part stuck out to me. What does it mean? Why is that valuable that the, the, the priesthood, the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
won't be taken from the earth again as it has in the past. Does it move you? Well, like it did in the past when I didn't have the church. It's nice to know that we can always have the church again. Mm -hmm. And that we can keep it to having the priesthood. There's a basket question. That that sort of is an answer to. Let me see if I can find it. I read some others. Uh, I mean, I'll get to all of these. Trust me. Okay. Yes, yeah, I think this is it. Um, with all of the today's problems with the world, with all of today's problems with the world, what promises are we given? Is there anything told about the future outcome um, of the Americas? I think um, beyond the Americas. Um, what promises are we given? Well, Ben just gave us one. It won't be taken away, which means that the mission of the, earth, the, the church will be fulfilled. Like we are, we're on a team that will win the bloody battle, right? Like we're on the winning team. That's a lot of assurance right there. That's a lot of promise. Um, I get that it's hard to live in this world. It's like scary. I was um, talking to somebody the other day about how uh, it seems like all of most of your lives, there has been war. Your country has been in a war somewhere. There's been insecurity in in the lives of young people since you have been growing up. And it seems to be only getting kind of worse in some ways. And then COVID is a huge deal for like what's gonna happen in the future? Are things gonna get worse? Well, actually, yeah, they're gonna get worse before they get better, unfortunately. They're get, things are gonna get worse before they get better, but they will get better. And we may pay a big price in the process but this is the only way to come through it successfully, is to stay true um, to what you know is right and stay true to the gospel. Um, there are some pretty scary things about what's actually mentioned in the Book of Mormon about what can happen in this country, this Gentile country, if we do not serve God. Basically, we will cease to be a country and we will be overrun. That's what the Book of Mormon prophesies if this Gentile country does not serve God. Kind of scary. Again, if that's the direction we're heading, where's the safe place to be in the middle of the mess? It's in Zion. Zion will always be favored of the Lord. Okay, thank you. Caleb, Ben, appreciate that. Um, so yesterday... Uh, I, I, I feel like I kind of owe you an apology, though, like, I'm always doing my best, but you deserve, I think, better than what, what we were able to do yesterday. Um, after the lesson, I was just like, I just keep thinking about what did, what did we experience in there? What did I say? What didn't I say? What could we have covered better? And, you know, I always want to do my best to preach by the Spirit. And... I don't know if I was just off my game because I was so tired or didn't have a lot of prep time or what, but I want to revisit some of the ideas from yesterday um, to make sure we really get the concept, okay? Your, your input is appreciated, always welcome, including you, Bailey, and Keith, and Iola at home. So, this is an interesting question. What do you seek? This is a powerful word right here. What does it mean to seek? To, to to seek. Uh, Charlie. To look for something. Okay. Is, is seek uh, a word that to you, Charlie, implies active or passive? Active. Okay. Good. Um, oops. So what do you seek? I hope you took an opportunity to write, to write something down. In doing the writing and the reflecting, it actually is, a, is an opportunity for the Holy Ghost to teach you something. 
Um, that kind of introspection, that kind of asking of yourself questions is a really good way to learn something about yourself from uh, an outside source, which is the life of Christ that is within you. So I hope that you're taking the opportunity to do that. Keep that in mind. What do I see? Because that's kind of where we're headed here. But yesterday, um, okay, well, I drew this little model on the, on the, we were talking about basically learning, right? And I'm thinking about what it's like to be in your shoes, and it starts like this. There's, there's a teacher, right? In school, we'll say. Let's think about the concept of like, what is learning to you? What is education to you? What, what, it, what is this system like that you have been raised in when it comes to education, learning, schooling stuff? Adam? It's our future. Education is your future? Okay, so it, it's, it's transformational, right? You learning something is meant to change something about you so that you can become something different, right? It's, it's your future. It's, it's what's... It's what's going to make a difference. So there's there's a teacher in school, and that teacher, and then there's you over here. There's the there's the student in school. Because isn't most of what we think of as education happening in a school setting, more or less? Like some have been had homeschool experience, some have been all in the public school experience. But it's more like okay, the bell rang. Okay, now we can start to learn. Now we have to start to learn. Oh, the bell rang. Now we stop learning, and now we go do something different. So this, there's this, this idea that what, what education is in school, and what, the, what is the teacher trying to do? What is the objective of the teacher in school? What are they, what, what are they trying to accomplish? Teach, impart information to their students. Yes, exactly right. So the teacher is trying to uh, transmit mass data like to people right i'm getting information over here from from me to you and why is a student in school what 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 is the next step after um after the teacher transmits the data what happens next in in a school setting after you get the information, then what comes on Friday or the next Monday or whatever? Yeah. It's like a test. Yeah, it's like a test, right? Is that what you're gonna say, Sylvia? Um, sort of, yeah. <laughs> okay, add to it then. So then you have a test or an exam to see whether or not you got the information successfully. And then, what is the purpose of that test or exam? What then? What is what is the purpose of that? To, for what? Yes, Trevor. To make sure you like know the data that the teacher is giving you. To make sure you remember. Okay, make sure you can remember it. That you can know it, that you can regurgitate it on a, an exam. Yes, and then yes. Um. Well, so you know it, and so that you can move forward. So you can move forward. What does that mean? Like move forward, and like learn new things. Once you cover one thing. Okay, so it's like a cycle. Test exam, okay, we took the exam, now we get, get to go back to more learning and then more exams, right? Okay, you were gonna say? So really, because our, gr our grade depends on how we act. Act? And yes, like whether we're listening or not, talking to other people, you know. Can you, yeah, okay, good, I, I'm with you, I agree with you. Um, it's a little complicated because some people can know information and not do well on a test, right? So it's like you can be smart, you can be intelligent, and not do well in school because you're not a good test taker. So really what we're examining here is whether or not you're able to successfully perform a test to show that you retain some kind of information from this mass education system. Okay, then you get a grade. What does that grade do? It ranks you, right? A rank order of, we'll say, test ability. <laughs> That's what's happening there, okay? And then once you get ranked, why is it important to get good grades? What are we headed to after this system and these grades 
comes what next? Right. So you want to go to colleges. More, more education, right? More of the same thing. And then after college comes what? What's the trajectory? What's the, the assembly line that we're just on? Life. Life? Or job. You're, you're going to all this so that you can be better in life? Yeah, maybe. What did somebody say? A career. A job, a career, right? So is that what you're going to say? Really, they're teaching us things so that we will be able to sustain a job and be able to live. Right. A job because you need money. Because why? We want you, we're using you to contribute to the economy. Right? We want to turn you into useful things, widgets, objects that are able to produce money, to pay taxes, to be informed citizens so you can vote, so that you can serve something in this country. That's what education was created for. Okay? To have an informed population that is able to contribute to the economy. So it's about money, and it's about voting, it's about taxes. Okay? This is a little bit of a cynical view, but this, there's some truth in here. So stay with me for a minute. That's what we think of when we think of school, education. It's all in this sort of funnel that's leading us to money. Like more money, more con contribution. Okay? Right. So there's a problem with this. There's a problem with this when it comes to thinking about knowledge. When it comes to thinking about, like, what is education about? What are we doing here? And so, unfortunately, there is so much. And, I mean, what is the teacher doing? Why are they teaching you? Because they love you, and they care about you, and they're there to volunteer their time to just, like, bless the rising generation, make tomorrow a better place. What are they doing? And they're working. They're working. Their money. They're getting money to do it. Right? So their motivation to show up to work every day, while it may be altruistic, they care about you and they want to make the future, but what they're doing is showing up because it's a paycheck. Right? So they're teaching because it's a job. They're transmitting data that they may not care that much about, but it's in the curriculum. So somebody said, you teacher will pay you to transmit this information to this group of people over and over and over and over again, and then give a test, rank them in their ability, so there are the haves and the have-nots, and those that are capable, and those that then believe they're not worth anything because they don't get good grades. And so that's useful because then it ranks us in college and it separates us into different kinds of careers, and then we can all contribute to the economy. Kind of cynical, there's some truth there. What is the problem with this is it gives us the totally wrong idea about knowledge, about, about education, about expanding our minds and our capacity because we think that it has to be done so what happens is you guys end up let's see if i can draw something that i don't know if it'll be useful but we'll just try it i think of it like this okay and there's like that and then there's this ah. and it's like somebody's like digging their heels in they're not happy, right? This is what's happening in a lot of your lives, right? You're just like, yeah, it's like, you're pushing me all around, you're telling me what you're, or it's like this. Um, how do we do another one? Um, and then there's like this. I don't know about all of this. I'm being pulled and I'm being pushed all the time. I have so much information that's being thrown at me. So much. I, I asked Charlie, what are your classes this, this semester? He listed off like seven completely different like things to be learning. And I'm like, how do you even how do you even manage that? So it doesn't become about learning so much as managing information overload. I've got so much coming at me, there's no way I can take it all in. People are pulling me this way, people are pushing me that way. Like, I don't want any of this. I don't choose any of this. It's a system that I'm in, that I'm being forced to, 
to conform to. And so, like, where is what I want in all of this? What do I care about? Um, whether you're, I mean, my experience in, in public school, it's like why well, I, I opted our kids out of the whole system at first as a homeschooler because, like, this is a real problem when it comes to thinking about learning. Because learning is only what people force you to do so you can take a test. And so it spoils our whole concept of going after knowledge like it's a gift, like it's a privilege, like I have the opportunity and the power and the agency to try to make something of myself. But this system sort of makes it hard and we get the wrong idea about it. Adam? Well, really, like, people can drop out of school. You can, At yeah. a point. Uh-huh. But if they choose to stay in school, they're choosing to stay in the system. Right. Yeah. At what age can you drop out legally? 15. 15? You can opt out. Okay. And then you're going to go just start working here, doing something like this, right? Okay. So, all right, where am I going with this? This is only just the setup for where we're actually heading for the gospel lesson. But do you identify with what I'm saying here? Like, am I getting any of this accurate? Oh, yeah. You're getting all of it. Accurate. When it comes to how you, what this, this, the system that you're in. Now, it's not all cynical. Yes, there are great teachers. Yes, there's information that's useful. But because there's so much of it, and it has to be all done by this time, and you have to take the test, it's like the whole thing just gets to be about teaching to the test because the teacher's money and ability to keep their job depends on not you as a person. It depends on whether you can take a test well. So the teachers teach to the test. You learn to the test. Like you don't learn to, to because you love the information. You want to master whatever it is that's being taught. It's like you got to take a test. So you have to just manage all the data prioritize what's on the test. Okay, that's what I have to memorize. So I'm gonna get that in my head, go regurgitate it on a test, then I'm gonna quickly, as quickly as I can, purge that, put it into some download so I have more RAM available in my brain to do the next test. So it's this whole system of just regurgitating information and not learning anything. Always, always get information and learning almost nothing. Except what do we learn? How to manage a system. So we're about learning System management, not so much about getting education. The education we're getting is how do I operate in a system and how do I work that system to my advantage? Okay, so there were two hands here, Taylor and Charles. So I think you absolutely nailed it on the head when you were saying that um, it's changed to more of a perspective of managing uh, material and managing data in comparison to viewing learning as gift um, especially as a kid I was given a bunch of extra opportunities to do extra learning like my sister taught me math early uh, my grandma got me a bunch of books that had a reader thing that was just information about humans like cell research like just tons of different stuff um, earth geology animal stuff um, and like on my own time I did a bunch of extra work but work because instead of work to me, um, all of my classmates thought I was crazy, but really I was having a great time because it's so fun to learn. It's okay. fun to know new things. Kids love learning. Like little kids, they're always just, they're never just sitting still doing nothing unless their mind has been spoiled with some sort of way to check out of life. But kids are curious. Like we want to know about everything. Little babies just put everything in their mouth to learn about it. Right? They, they're getting in data. We want to gather information. We, we're hungry for it, right? Of all kinds of information, we're very curious. And then unfortunately, we get into a system where that, the concept changes and we just get so overloaded, there's no room left for, for that innate curiosity about who am I and what is this world I'm in? What is this all about? What is this thing like? What is that thing? Like, how does this all work? It kind of ruins, it has the capacity potentially to spoil that, that love of learning because there's just so much of it. More comment there? I'm agreeing with you essentially. Yeah. Um, and, and then Charles. I think 
Okay. Um, you don't have to keep going. I'm not saying. Just like all the time. I don't know. With with high school now, um, I just feel like it, it's kind of instead of like there's still like a love for learning. There's still okay. Um, it's still fun to learn, but it just changes the focus so much. It's it's more a forced learning instead of optional learning. Um, if you really want to learn. Everybody has classes that they want to do, extra classes that they just can't fit into their schedule. Mm -hmm. um, there's always things that are extra that would be really cool, um, but it's just hard to fit it all in. Yeah, there's so much else. Because there's a man, there's an overload of information, right? Okay, mm -hmm. go ahead. I'm gonna be taking some notes while you're talking. Yeah, I go for it. Um, I don't really have anything. Where's the time? It's also it's perspective mm -hmm. too, in a way. Like maybe the time is when you're actually at school, right? But you just have to switch your perspective into wanting it for good and seeing, yeah, the system isn't perfect and yeah, it's not great, but mm -hmm. there's some good that you can get out of it if you think about it the right way. I mean, but that's not always the easiest. There are some small solutions. Good, love it. So we've defined the problem and you two are getting at some of the solution, right? The solution to the problem. And you said perspective is a huge one. Yes. So whether or not you want to learn it, you're, you're, you kind of have to. Where are you getting to, though? What do you have to do? What are you forced to do? What is the have to part? Like, learning has to be done in order to get farther. Are you talking about in the educational system, or are you talking about a, a wider concept of like expansion of our knowledge? Of You know, you're talking about our journey through life and eternity, or are you talking about you have to learn it because you have an exam on this date? Well, really, it depends after done learning everything, you need a, at least a GED to get a job, which means you have to learn. So all the have-to part, all the must-do part has to do with the system that we're in. If we weren't in the system, then what would be the role of learning and education? I think that's what I'm getting at. Because right now we are so entrenched in a system that that defines for us what learning is. It becomes the definition, the how and the why of learning is the school system. Uh, and it's not all bad. I'm not saying it's all bad and we need to just throw it all away, right? I'm not saying that, but I'm saying this is the problem when it comes to looking at how learning is. And most, of, most kids are like, I've had enough of all of this overload. Stop pushing me around so much and pulling me in every direction. What about what I'm curious about? What about what I'm interested in? How do I rekindle and find some space for this? Seeking. And that's where we're going to come to today. Tomorrow, remember where we are. Hopefully, this is setting the stage for now getting to a gospel perspective about learning. But we can't get there without making a distinction between the learning you've experienced thus far, many of you, in a system of, of schooling and the whole other perspective of, of seeking knowledge and truth. Okay? Um, thanks for participating. I love you guys. I love teaching this class, preaching in this class. <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Adam.
Thanks for being here. Iola, Keith, Bailey. See you tomorrow, okay? Do you have any questions?